Um, I thought I'd make a coffee and walnut cake. I was inspired to make this um, after a student sent me a lovely picture of a coffee and walnut cake they've made and it just made me really um, fancy the idea of making one. I haven't made one for a while. So, coffee and walnut cake is uh, quite an easy one to make as long as you've got the ingredients. So I've turned and preheated the oven on and it needs to go on quite low for this one, um, about 150 to 60 fan, um, about one. 70 if it's non-fan and that gas mark three so really quite low for this one you need two 18 centimeter um, victoria sandwich tins which you need to line you've seen me make cakes before and you know i've got these liners that i use that are made of effectively greaseproof paper so i'm just going to put those in there but you'd need to line your tins uh, next thing you're going to need to do is to get some ingredients ready to go. So in my bowl, it's an all-in-one mix, so all the ingredients go in the bowl and then I'm going to use the electric whisk to combine everything. So we're using two eggs, so with a two egg mix you're going to use 100 or 110 grams of everything else. So because this is quite an old-fashioned recipe and it's written originally in um, ounces, uh, this is 110 grams. So it's 110 grams of self-raising flour. If you don't have self-raising, use plain flour with a little bit of extra baking powder in it. 110 grams of caster sugar. 110 grams of like soft margarine-like stalk. Um, and they all go inside the bowl with the two eggs. To that, you need to add an extra teaspoon of baking powder. And that just helps to give it a good rise because you've got in here um, coffee as well as walnuts, you need to make sure that uh, you give it enough raising agents so the cake can rise. Then I'm going to make some coffee for this. Uh, you need just three teaspoons or a tablespoon of instant coffee. This is coming near the end and it's not a massive amount in the bottom, so I'm going to put a little bit extra in because one of those spoons has not very full and then you want to add about 10 millilitres or a dessert spoon of water from the kettle that's boiled recently just to help that dissolve so I'm going to try and measure it on the scales there you go that's close enough and try and stir this to dissolve coffee And then that, when it's dissolved and you can't see any lumps of the coffee, and I'm just going to give that a quick stir at the bottom. Move the scales out of the way, that always helps. That just again goes inside the bowl with the other ingredients. So in that goes. Go. The last thing you need, I'm going to put that into soak because it's quite sticky from the coffee. The last thing you're going to need in the actual cake itself is some walnuts. Um, 50 grams and you want them finely chopped. Now when I found some walnuts in the supermarket, all I could get was walnut pieces. So what I've done as I've weighed out 50 grams is I've come across some that are walnut halves and I'm keeping them to one side because at the end when we put buttercream on the top, I'm going to use the walnut halves so that they decorate around the top of the cake. So I've saved them, but I've now got 50 grams of walnut pieces. But it doesn't matter what they are because I'm going to chop them up quite finely anyway. And you want these fairly fine so that they don't fall to the bottom of your sponge. What we want is for them to go throughout the sponge. That's to get a bit finer now. You could absolutely do this in a food processor. Probably wouldn't take more than a moment or two. But I always weigh up in my mind the washing up and, and how it compares. And so for me, a washing up a chopping board and a knife is less than a food processor, or I suppose I could put the food processor in the dishwasher. There you go. with the other ingredients. So it's a nice simple cake from the point of view that everything goes into one bowl and gets mixed in. There we go. So in they go. Then the 
an electric whisk and you just whisk until everything is combined. It should just take about 15 or 20 seconds. I will leave the video on just while I do this because it will be quite a quick one. Oh, if I turn it on it will be even quicker. a minute to a minute and it's gone a little bit lighter in colour. It smells amazing from that coffee. Next thing you're going to do is just divide it between the two sandwich tins. And so it literally is just going to be a spoonful in each. I'm trying to make sure that I'm keeping the spoonfuls fairly similar. It's just got a little bit more, so I'll take a little bit out of there. Just a little bit. That's probably about it there then. So then, all I'm going to do is, it will find its shape in the oven, but you just need to help it a little bit. And so I'm just going to spread the cake around using a knife that I've used to butter the bread. I'm being quite gentle because any air that I have managed to trap in there, I don't want to lose. Same with the other one, quite quickly. You could do this with a palette knife as well, if you've got one. There we go. Beautiful. These then go into the oven, and they're going to need to cook because it's very low, the temperature for this one. They're going to need to cook for about half an hour. What you're looking for is for them to lightly spring back in the centre when you touch them with a clean little finger. Um, they do take a bit longer than when we cook them at 180, and that's okay. Just important to say though, they need to go on the same shelf. They should fit side by side in your oven. Um, that's important, otherwise if you've got one on the top shelf, one on the shelf below, they will cook at slightly different times. So they're going to go in. Once they've gone in, Going to make sure that I've got some butter out of the fridge because we're going to make some buttercream for this. So I'm going to use uh, 75 grams of butter, um, and it needs to be butter. It can't be like stalk margarine, hard margarine for this. Um, and 150 grams of icing sugar, and then a little bit more coffee essence to or coffee to make an essence to make it coffee flavored uh, buttercream. So get your butter out of the fridge ready. These go into the oven. I'm going to get cleaned down. Thank you. Cakes have had half an hour now in the oven. Uh, I went and brought them out, and when I lightly touch them with a clean finger, they bounce back up. If for any reason in the centre they feel like they're dropping, they're not cooked, give them another five minutes and they, they will then cook. Another way that you can see when they're cooked, sort of ready to be cooked is that actually they start to almost shrink away from the outside. I know that if I move the paper it looks like they have, but they actually start to just leave the side of the baking paper. So at this stage, these can come out the oven, and I'm just going to take the paper off. These literally slide out here very easily, and just leave them to cool on a cooling rack. You can be quite gentle with them because they are very delicate at this stage. I'm going to leave those over, um, over here out of the way, and while these are cooling down, going to get the buttercream made. So it is a coffee um, buttercream. So I've got two teaspoons of the um, instant coffee granules here and I'm going to add about a teaspoon of hottish water from the kettle just to melt that and or dissolve the coffee granules in it. Now the coffee I'm using isn't the newest so it isn't the best at dissolving. Try not to add too much liquid to this uh, or you will find that your buttercream will be too sticky and you'll need to add more icing sugar to it. 
I don't know why, I always seem to have a lot of buttercream left over, so I try and minimise the amounts I'm making. So that's my uh, coffee when it's done there. You then need 75 grams of butter that you've got soft. So you've, I've left these out, I left the butter out for a, a little while. It's quite a hot day, so it's only taken about half an hour. It's quite soft. And then whatever quantity of butter you're using, so I'm using 75 grams, you need double the amount of icing sugar. So this is 150 grams of icing sugar. Once I've added the coffee in as well, I will see if I need to add any more icing sugar because I might just need another tablespoon or two. First job then is to take the electric whisk and just get the butter so that it is, um, it is uh, pliable and ready to start adding the icing sugar. At this stage, don't add the icing sugar, just get the butter so that it's covering almost the bottom of the bowl. I'll show you what I mean. <laughs> the butter is soft enough to sort of coat the bottom of the bowl and not be in lumps so I'm going to start adding the icing sugar so I'm going to start by adding probably about three spoonfuls of it and if I now turn the whisk on at this stage I will decorate the kitchen in a cloud of white icing sugar dust so what I'm going to do is take some of the coffee mix and sort of sprinkle it over the top and the liquid in that and the butter will hopefully help to stop this from billowing up. When you do turn it on, it will still, you still get icing sugar to start with anyway. So just keep it on a low speed to start with. And then as the icing sugar is incorporated, uh, and then you can turn the speed up, to stop it, and then we're gonna add some more icing sugar. sudden you'll find that the icing sugar is incorporated. You just carry on repeating that until you've got all of the icing sugar added and the coffee mixture added uh, and I'll rejoin you at the end when I manage to get all of the icing sugar added and all of the coffee. I'll show you what it looks like and talk you through if you might need to add a little bit more um, icing sugar. Thank you. The icing sugar is all incorporated now. Um, it should, when the buttercream is made, depending on how hot it is in um, the, the ambient temperature on the day, it should be fairly stiff, it shouldn't be like, liquid or anything. If for any reason you've added a little bit extra liquid because maybe you've got more than a teaspoon of um, water from the kettle, then you might just need to perhaps add just another tablespoon or two of the icing sugar. But this looks absolutely fine. Now what I can't do, because they can't come out of the oven within the last five minutes. I can't put the buttercream in the cakes yet. I really need those cakes to be absolutely cooled down. Not only are they very delicate, so by putting the icing on top, I would rip the cake apart, but also they're hot and they would melt the buttercream, which would be a real shame when we've made such a nice cake. So I'm gonna put the buttercream to one side. You can put it in the fridge, though if it does go too hard, it'd be quite difficult to spread over the top of the cakes. Uh, so actually it's not too hot today, it is a warm day but I'm just going to cover this with cling film, leave it and then pop it onto the cake. Probably be about 20 minutes for the cake to cool down but obviously it depends, I'm going to open the window and let a bit of air on it to cool it down. I'll rejoin you and show you how to ice the cake. It's been about 20 minutes, the cakes have come out, they're now nice and cool. Um, I can see that looking at them, this one here is very flat, this one here tails off a little bit uh, over this side. So when I ice it, I either need to make sure that I ice it with a little bit more icing on this side, or if the other cake had got a little bit that was um, going the other way, then I would make sure that it was uh, opposite ends to that, so that you end up with a, a thick bit with a thin bit, and then a thin bit with a thick bit. But actually, the way this is, I've just got a little bit extra icing on top of this one. So, got my butter icing. I left it at room temperature just to make sure that it uh, was still soft enough to spread. And I'm going to put about just under half of the icing 
on the bottom, or what will be the bottom of the cake. Oops. And I'm just going to use a palette knife, or if you don't have a palette knife, a knife that you'd use to butter your bread, just to spread that around. Now because this is, hasn't been in the fridge, this butter icing is quite easy to just manipulate over the top of the cake. Now I've remembered that that little side over there was a little bit thinner, so I've gone a little bit uh, thicker of icing on that bit. I'm going to then take the other slightly larger half of the icing and I'm going to place that on the top of the cake, or what will be the top of the cake. If you have any icing spare, you can keep it, put it in the fridge. It should keep for a few days. Um, it must be kept in the fridge though because it's obviously got butter in it. So you're going to just spread that around. Try and get it as smooth as you can. I'm just going to do this quite quickly. And then I said right at the very start I'd saved some walnut halves for this. So what I'm going to do is put the cake together. So I'm going to put bottom half on the bottom, the top half on top. Then I'm going to take the walnut halves and I'm just going to arrange them on there so that they just decorate the cake a little bit. You can sort of mark your slices out then so you know roughly how big a slice will be. There we go. I don't know how many I've put on there. Four, eight, that seems about right for about a cake that size. Uh, yeah, there you go. Um, obviously eaten best the day that you make it, so I hope that you enjoy this one. Um, it is a lovely recipe and like I say, inspired by one of my students that uh, sent me a picture through email of a, of a coffee and walnut cake. So thank you very much to that student. Enjoy this one.